Good morning. Let us begin. Uh, last time we had two lectures back to back, 33 and 34, uh, quite a few new concepts were covered. So, today will be a little bit longer and more detailed uh, review so that we can pick up from there. We are talking broadly about the uh, topic of multi carrier modulation and the motivation for multi carrier modulation uh, is uh, stems from the fact that we want to deal with wideband signals. So, that is primarily our uh, interest. A wideband signal has several challenges. You get frequency selective fading and uh, the complexity of the equalizer is uh, uh, quite a challenge. So, we said that the a wideband signal we will treat as n narrowband carriers n cross b. Okay. So, this is where the multi carrier modulation uh, concept is coming from. So, b the bandwidth of each of the sub uh, carriers or each of the carriers. Uh, is chosen to handle dispersion. We said that the bandwidth is related to the baud rate, baud rate uh, determines how sensitive you are to dispersion. So, basically I will say that B is chosen, you have to choose it to handle time dispersion. Once you have done that, then the number of channels gets fixed, N denotes the number of, uh, number of uh, carriers and the number of carriers you need to achieve a certain bandwidth. So, basically uh, the, the key decision in this uh, multi in the design of a multi carrier system, one is the choice of the bandwidth B because that is what is going to tell you how robust your system is going to be. Uh, and once you have a multi carrier system of this type, we said that, uh, so we will say that now we have a MCM framework. The wide band signal is now transmitted as multiple uh, narrow band carriers. And in order to achieve capacity in a multi uh, in a MCM framework, we will do water filling, and that is where the uh, interest in in terms of capacity comes from. And uh, we said that we will do water filling over time and over frequency. Over frequency to achieve the uh, capacity at every time in uh, every time instant, and then at each time instant the channel changes, and then you adapt uh, accordingly. So all of this is uh, uh, done to maximize the throughput of your system via CSIT. You need to have channel state information at the transmitter, so which means that there is a feedback channel. So, this is uh, the framework of the multi carrier system. Now, where does uh, multi rate DSP play a role and uh, what is the benefits that we can get is what we are going to be, uh, what we focused on. So, we have this notion of a trans multiplexer. Trans multiplexer is a device that converts from narrow band signals to a wide band signal. Now, when we did the design of the trans multiplexer, what we talked about in the ideal case where these signals were uh, side by side without any gaps, that is what we refer to as a minimal system. It occupies the minimal bandwidth that is required. On the other hand, if you want to have practical filters, we would have to introduce some uh, guard bands so that you can have the filtering and this is where the notion of redundancy has come in and, uh, and we were leveraging this in the last lecture. Okay. Now, redundancy along with that comes the notion of orthogonality. Basically, we want to be able to establish these signals independent of each other, these narrow band signals. So, we are looking for ways of separating them. Of course, separating them in frequency is one way and there are other ways which by which you can say that okay, they, uh, you do not have to, as long as they do not overlap, there is a notion of orthogonality in frequency, I, I should be able to separate. But from a practical standpoint, we said okay, that is not possible, uh, you would have to allow some overlap because you cannot have perfect filters. The challenge is how do we design with overlap, still maintaining orthogonality and maintaining something that is close to a minimal system. We made an observation that uh, the IDFT, DFT gives us one such framework, maybe just the mathematical uh, uh, bag uh, or the, uh, the thing that go with this figure. So, let us take the, uh, let us take the IDFT matrix. So, basically it is W inverse, if I were to ask you to write down the uh, IDFT matrix, this would be 1 over n times the conjugate of the DFT matrix, the conjugate of the DFT matrix is W n k n, this will be W n minus k n. Okay. 
okay, and uh, DFT matrix is symmetric, so um, it is oh, strictly you, should, you would have written it as minus nk, but uh, it is the same. So, what does this actually come out to be? It is 1 over n e power j 2 pi over n times k n. K represents the harmonics 0, 1 to n minus 1. So, you can think of these as the harmonics of the fundamental frequency e power j 2 pi over n, they are the harmonics and you are looking over a time window which has n samples. M, m, um, okay, am I doing n or n? Uh, n. Okay, so, you are looking at n samples. Okay, this is this is your notion of of the time space. So, given this, each of the rows are orthogonal, though they overlap in frequency. So, that's the figure that we have. They are overlapping in frequency. Nevertheless, you have a system that is orthogonal. So, the IDFT is a very powerful concept that we bring from DSP and say, oh, by the way, we have a framework that already satisfies whatever the system uh, you are looking for. You want to have orthogonality? Yes, we have. You want to have uh, minimal uh, bandwidth? We can do minimal bandwidth. Uh, overlap is, uh, uh, is needed? Yes, overlap is present, but we still have orthogonality. Okay, so, that is, that is one piece that uh, we will leverage a lot. We also reviewed the blocking and unblocking operations. The uh, blocking operation, the creation of blocks happens through a advanced chain by downsampling. We call this as the blocking, the, uh, the inverse or the reverse operation as the unblocking operation with the delay chain. And we said that uh, using the result of upsampling followed by a delay followed by downsampling, uh, there are certain um, simple simplifications that we can achieve. If you did not have the z power minus 2, these would be straight lines. If you have a parallel to serial and a serial to parallel uh, converter, uh, but if you had delays, then you start to see some uh, uh, changes in the uh, interconnections. But again, this is a very simple uh, uh, example, but the more important thing is what happens when we have it in the context of a practical channel. Okay. So, we also mentioned that we have two types of polyphase decomposition. Type 1 associated with when there is a delay chain, type 2 associated with the uh, structure that has got advance operator. So, just a quick uh, definition, type 1 you have powers of z power minus k, that is the delay chain, series of um, um, sequence of delays. The uh, type 2 has a series of advance operators. So, again type 1, type 2 was reviewed. Now, uh, Notion of redundancy, we have already said that a minimal uh, configuration would require them to be sort of uh, packed tightly. When you have a little bit more of a gap, you would have uh, more spaces. Now, how do you visually achieve that or you know intuitively achieve that? Uh, you are here in this particular, in the minimal system, there are m signals, I upsample each of the signals by m. So, the sampling rate is maintained. Now, maybe we can uh, write this down a little bit more formally. Let me just uh, create a box which we can fill in with some information that, uh, so the notion of redundancy is what we are trying to capture here. Redundancy says in, th in this case, uh, there is additional resources being utilized, but how do I ca achieve? So, if I have a minimal transmultiplexer minimal transmultiplexer. Okay, so, which means that I will go from a TDM system to a FDM system. FDM is the wide band, uh, wide band system. Okay. So, this is M parallel signals and this is a wide band signal. Okay, so, this is the wide band. So, the minimal system says that if I have a sampling rate N s per uh, per signal, ns samples per second, samples per second for each signal, for each signal, then I have m of them. So, the total is m times ns. Okay. Now, that is what, that is what the parallel branches, uh, that is what the parallel branches give you, right. When you have a where is the term? Ah, the parallel branches have m m branches of them. Now, on the on this side, 
So if these, each of these is n s and you have m of them and because of the upsampling this becomes m times n s right. So that is a minimal uh, trans multiplexer. So minimal trans multiplexer uh, is one where you have but if you did upsampling by n so with redundancy so with redundancy we are increasing the number of resources so it is n times n s where n is greater than m. So somewhere the notion of additional resources comes in uh, the minute you have um, a, a higher sampling rate you know that more bandwidth is being used which means that if you still have only m signals obviously there is some uh, gaps which are present again um, not may not be exactly as you visualize it but it's it the notion of redundancy and how is introduced into the system was an important element from the last lecture okay so with this configuration we said how will the synthesis filter bank look because that's the first stage of the trans multiplexer upsampling by m followed by the filter that's a minimal configuration but we introduce upsampling by n with the same uh, uh, filters but now these filters have to be slightly uh, differently designed but that part it will come later so the uh, the uh, the vector representation is a scalar f0 f1 up to fm minus 1 multiplied by these signals which are upsampled so basically we get uh, a uh, combining of the signals that is why it is called the synthesis filter we do not know the, um, the time domain expression uh, that is more for completeness but the one that we wanted to focus on is doing the polyphase decomposition. Once we did the polyphase decomposition we showed that the analysis uh, sorry the synthesis filter bank can then be represented in this form where g of z is a rectangular matrix you are splitting each filter into n polyphase components there are m of them. So basically the polyphase components of each filter are along the columns and uh, there are m such filters and therefore you get an n cross m basically it is the redundancy part is being shown by a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. Similarly you can uh, uh, introduce so basically you can move the uh, uh, using the noble identities so th this is how. Okay. Now analysis filter bank we said we will do a type 2 polyphase decomposition. So basically this is the structure of the polyphase uh, decomposition uh, the um, analysis filters since you have upsampled by n which means introduction of redundancy you must downsample by n in order to remove the redundancy because at the end of the day you, you want to have the original signal back. So uh, basically we are doing the downsampling by n following the same procedure doing polyphase decomposition and then the uh, noble identity we get the, the following structure okay. So I am um, assuming this part of it you are able to review and are, uh, and are comfortable with that. Then we went to the putting the entire trans multiplexer together. So the synthesis portion, the analysis portion with the channel in between, channel has got the dispersive channel as well as the noise we said that the noise we will uh, more or less ignore because that is an it comes as an impairment which we cannot do anything about but the channel impairment we definitely want to address. So given this uh, structure we then uh, went back and said that there is a uh, understanding of what can happen in the channel you can have mixing of the signals that is called inter sub channel interference and then you can have uh, inter symbol interference within each sub channel that is called intra sub channel interference. So basically two types of distortion both of which need to be eliminated for us to get a, uh, a, a uniform detector. Uh, so uh, there is a result that uh, we introduced along with the notion the result is known notation is, uh, uh, is new but we introduced it upsampling by a factor of m followed by a filter followed by downsampling by a factor of m. We said that this is LTI important this is an LTI system and its transfer function is equal to the 0th polyphase component and how did we uh, how did we uh, represent the uh, LTI system we represented the LTI system in terms of H of Z that is the, um, the matrix uh, sorry the transfer function with the down arrow which basically means that you will downsample this by a factor of m you downsample h of z what will happen you will get uh, you take the impulse response and downsample it you will be left with the polyphase component 0 and all the other things are thrown away so basically what you get is e of z. So uh, this is an important result please um, keep this notation 
reference handy because that is what helps us simplify the, uh, the figures that we have in the next uh, chart. Okay. So, now if you la uh, labeling of the signals very, very important, let me just make sure you have S0 to SM-1 on this side, okay. U0, U1, UM-1 on this side, okay. And uh, S hat, S1 hat, SN-1 hat. So, I am looking at the transfer functions between S0 and S0 hat. So, if you basically look across from uh, one end to the other, okay, M can be any from any one of these and K can be any one of those. Uh, there is always going to be an upsampling by N, a filter, the channel, keep in mind I am not I'm ignoring the noise, another filter downsampling by N and the output. That is what is going to be the chain between input and output. So, we know that this configuration can be uh, uh, simplified and we know that that is going to give us an LTI system and the transfer function of the LTI system is given by HK followed by CK, C of Z followed by uh, FM downsampled by N. So, given this we could then write down a matrix transfer function between the whole set of inputs and the whole set of outputs. And we related the pro properties of T of Z to the uh, two types of interference, whether it could be interblock, intrablock, both of these we described saying, okay, if you get a diagonal, there is no interblock, inter, uh, sorry, uh, there, there is no uh, interchannel mixing. If you, get, if you get each of these matrices to be a constant matrix, then there is no interblock uh, interference and I think both of them are, are, are very important. So basically, uh, this is the, um, um, the matrix, uh, this is how you, would, you could write the, it is a um, uh, polynomial of matrices and then we uh, indicated that uh, if this matrix turns out to be a constant matrix, there is no interblock interference and if it is a diagonal matrix, then it becomes no inter block, uh, no intra block interference. So, this is not inter, this is intra, okay, this should be intra block, okay. So, uh, uh, no, 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 it is inter, sorry about that. Actually, this is inter only, I am sorry. Okay, uh, last uh, review uh, portion of the this thing is that uh, we wrote down the polyphase implementation, the, uh, the matrix representation of the synthesis filters. These are the synthesis filters followed by the analysis filters. very important. Once we have this, we obtained the uh, representation in terms of the polyphase components of these matrices and we also said that we will write C of Z in terms of the of its own uh, polyphase decomposition and then we obtained a transfer function between R's. R's are the input to the S uh, matrix and X is uh, X0 X to N minus 1 are the outputs of the G matrix. So, so, between these two matrices, between the two green sets of green lines, we got this transfer function and we showed that it was a pseudo circular. Okay. So, this is this is uh, uh, pretty much uh, where we are in terms of the uh, overall, um, over, overall understanding and overall representation. 